everything has a purpose, you know. Yes. And we have a purpose also towards each other, you know. People meeting may be only for 10 minutes, but it can be the most important meeting for both of them or for one of them. Yes. Without knowing at the time, you know. Yes. They pass each other, they never see each other again. And then one of them said, there was something there. And we are live. Hello, everyone. This is Batista Pap, and our guest today is Lars Mool. And Lars is a seer and a mystic who has been bestowed with extrasensory perception since childhood. Uh, today, he's an author, he's a speaker. Lars is a healer with an international following. Uh, Lars is giving talks and workshops on the law of light and the O manuscript. And he's also the co-founder of the Gilalei Institute of Energy and Consciousness. It's so good to see you, Lars. Thank good you very to, much. To have you. See you, Baptiste. Hi. Yes. Um, Lars, your story is amazing. Um, I, when I, I um, did my research on you, uh, I saw a lot of similarities with uh, Paulo Coelho in terms mm -hmm. that you also had a bank background as a singer, a songwriter, and then you turned um, to uh, the spiritual, let's say, to, to writing spiritual books, um, to doing uh, workshops. Can you share a little bit um, with us how, um, how your journey started on the spiritual path? Um, I know since childhood, you, 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 you had ex extrasensory perception, but can you share a little bit with our audience how that started? Yes, it really started when I was um, 10 years old. I had a little sister that was six years old and uh, she was um, diagnosed with a, a tumor, a brain tumor. And at that time, this is in, in the late 50s, they weren't that good at uh, operating and, and handled these things. And um, she died from the operation. And that was the... <laughs> the beginning of a whole new path for me and I, that was actually the why i there was no way around it from that moment from the shock i think i developed um, extrasensual uh, um, perception you know i started to to um, be very aware of the how adults were saying one thing and doing another i was starting to to feel other people's pains and and at that time you know being 10 years you know i was really not uh, i i could not process it you know and uh, there were so many things happening you know i also had a nightly experiences of kundalini movements that was very very scary and very very painful so i did not have it, get any sleep and from my 10th years i actually did not get any regular schooling I, I just stayed away from school. And at that time, there was not, you know, child psychologists and stuff like that was not, they were not into, they did not know what to do with a, a person like me. So I think it, 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 it was uh, a relief for them when I did not attend school, you know. So in, in, in a way, it was a free pass for me. And uh, so one winter, I was always cycling around town and, uh, so one one winter day it was too cold and i searched for a place to to find some warmth and it happens to be in the church where the door was open and when i came in there i heard the the organist uh, rehearsing and the sound of that totally was so breathtaking so i started to um, check out the churches in my hometown Aarhus and find out when the organist was uh, rehearsing here and when he it, it was another church and so so i had a whole schedule i could every day go into a church and sit in the back and just listen to that music bach and buxtehude and messian and all these people so that is actually where i got my musical education you could say listening to this but at the same time it also did something to my of course i was not aware that i could not um 
uh, what do you call it? I could not uh, give any explanation for it or anything. But later on, I understood that it had a profound um, uh, impact on me and my inner life also. So I would say when I was 15 years old, I was totally like um, open into the bone. I was really naked in many ways and really, really vulnerable. And at that time, uh, when I was 15 years old, I received a book in, by post, by an anonymous post. I don't know to this day who, who sent that book to me. And um, it happened to be a, a small book of aphorisms of a Sufi master called Hasrat Inayat Khan, who was also a musician. And that was really the start. I was 14 years old at the time. So I did not speak any English or anything, but true, it was true. Uh, Hasrat Inayat Khan's movement had uh, uh, its headquarters in Holland at that time. So I remember, I, and I saw that in the back of this book. So I wrote them and uh, they sent me a, a book in English of him. And that was actually a book from which I learned to speak English, you know? Mm. I did not know any words, you know? I, I just read it over and over again until, you know, ah, yeah. You know, today, all kids, you know, 10 years old they can speak almost fluently english absolutely I, i've spent a lot of uh, time in denmark also in uh, Aarhus. Mm -hmm. yeah um, okay so you know my town yeah yeah, yeah i know Aarhus. it's the second largest uh, city in uh, in denmark yeah. right you've got copenhagen mm -hmm. and Aarhus. but i did yeah. a lot of uh, screenings of the power of the heart in Aarhus. and uh first thing that i noticed when i was in denmark everyone speaks english fluently uh, mm -hmm. these days uh, in, in holland it's it's the same um but i really yeah. loved Aarhus. uh it was a wonderful energy it's really also a student town right you, you see a lot mm -hmm. of students uh, but it's a wonderful energy so so did you did you enjoy growing up there it was my you know it became my town you know <laughs> in yeah. many ways and right now i'm sitting in in a monastery where i live in the center of of uh of Aarhus. okay wow. in the very center of the center of Aarhus, wow. yes. and um yeah, um, I think it, it has some significance where you grow up. Yes. It, there's a frequency in there that yes. somehow connect you to, to former lifetimes also, yes. but also for your purpose in this life. Yes. It doesn't mean that you have to stay there all your, uh, the rest of your life, yes. but you know, the, maybe it was a good idea for anybody, who, wh whoever they are and wherever they live, to, to check out the frequency yes. that is in that particular place where they are living. Because yes. the thing is, it has significance for who we are and what we are here to do. Yes. As Stella Lema said, it's, there's nothing that is coincidental. No. There's a reason why you were, you, were, you were born where you were born and raised in the Christian uh, society and all these things. And I think we, we need to take uh, care of that. Yes. Know? And do you believe before we are born that we sign up for that life? I mean, if we believe <clears throat> in reincarnation, I, I think you do believe in reincarnation, that you know... No, no I don't believe in... I don't believe... I know. You know, you know. Okay, that's yeah. better, yeah. Yeah. So you know that reincarnation is is real. So yeah. <clears throat> before you were born, before you 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 became um, Lars Mull, did you know you signed up for this life? Yes, and there's absolutely no doubt that okay. we all sign up for each hour, the path we are going to do, and we we <clears throat> we choose our parents, we choose the the circumstances, <clears throat> more or less. Sorry, yes. and then. Um, yeah, that becomes part of that frequency we are talking about. Yes, yes. Why I for me? Why your town? Where you were? You know, it's all. It all uh, adds up adds up to to uh, something that you have been instrumental in in creating. You know. Yes. So you 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 start to become interested in music. Um, can you share a little bit with with our audience how? How did that start? Were you being guided into that um, no, energetically? Actually, yeah. <clears throat> no, because if you imagine being 15 years old, you have no schooling, yes. and suddenly 
it dawns on you that that some your parents and your circumstances or people around you, that society, they need you to go uh, to choose a certain path. What do you want to do with your life? And I knew that I was not born to be working from uh, on on you know in the hamster wheel you know yes. so to speak. already then i knew i had to find my own way yes. but at that time i did not know what that would yes. for uh, really lucky for me fortunately for me i was musical so in the beginning of the 60s you know beat music started up you know and then the youth movement and that was my luck because uh, i found some um some uh, some some other souls there uh, that had formed the band that as i was looking for a place to be yes. more than a musical yes. uh, something musical uh, entity that was driven by ambition yes. you just wanted a place to be you know yes. to belong in a way yeah yeah and also to be in this society you know because yes. already then i thought this place was more or less crazy you know yes Yes, yeah, well, it, it is true. It's now, nowadays it's even more obvious, of course. So uh, mm. Paul, Paul McCartney of the Beatles said um, that he went into music in the beginning just to get attention from, from the girls. Um, oh, of course, that was also played a big part of it. Yes. I think that played a big part of all who started in, when yes. they were, were young, you know, of course. Yes. You know, that attraction has also always been very strong, you know. Yes. So um, I've always been a big fan of the Beatles, of John Lennon and uh, Paul Me McCartney. Too, I, uh, I, yeah. I still think, I mean, they, they were the yeah. best songwriting couple. No, ever. no, no doubt about it. They no are just. About it. Yes. Yeah. Can you, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm such a big fan of John Lennon still. I mean, he, he was mm -hmm. killed uh, when he was 40. And mm -hmm. um, I sometimes have even dreams about him that his spirit comes to me in a dream. And um, did, did you ever think about, you know, so, so, such a gifted songwriter um, mm -hmm. who was able to, 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 in a way, download all these beautiful songs? Can you talk, speak a little bit uh, about that on the soul level? Is that a more elevated soul if, when you're able to, to create such beautiful art? I think there's one thing we need to stress here because yeah. I love all of the Beatles, you know, yes. or as some of uh, George and Paul. But you shall remember that I think that without Paul McCartney, John Lennon would have missed something. And without John Lennon, Paul McCartney would have missed something. Yes. I think it's very, very imp important to, to, to see those two as one, yes. because e even that John Lennon wrote his own songs and McCartney wrote his own songs and, and they were called uh, Lennon-McCartney songs. Mm -hmm. They each had a play just by being there, you know? Yeah. They influenced each other. Yes. And I think uh, you are totally right that, that John Lennon in the beginnings, especially in the Beatles, wrote most of the songs. Yes. But as time went by, it, it turned over because John Lennon was a lazy, Yes, back, you know, he wanted to do a lot of other things, but yes. Paul McCartney was more a, a, a work, worker, yes. uh, alcoholic, workaholic, you know, yes. and he really wanted to, and he, I mean, he have done some amazing, together they, they created something that also um, involved George Harrison and Ringo Starr, yes. because if you remember, when they, the first time they played with Ringo, Yes. They all knew that now it had been fulfilled. Yes. Now they had the backbeat that they needed. Yes. And I think it's very important also to think as Beatles as one entity, you yes. know. If yes. you had taken one of them out, uh, just think about the role that George Harrison played for many, many years. Yes. Being a silent Beatle and having a loads of songs that he could not get into it because how can you handle the yes. best songwriters in the world? Yes. You're, you're in the same band as the two best songwriters in the world. Yes. Impossible. But yes. despite that, he, he did it, you know, and he had a, a, a very, very important factor to yes. playing in the band, you know. Yes. And we should remember that in wherever we go, there might be a star there that shines, you know. Yes. But that star would only shine because there's somebody reflecting it, you know. 
yes. the light from our star. Yes. And we should remember that for ourselves also, yes. that when we work together with other people, yes. it might be you who get all the credit, yes. but you could not do it without this or that, and you know? Yes, you're so all, always co-creating, yes. Yeah, of yes. course. Yes. And um, I, I um, myself also uh, are so uh, grateful when I meet people that I feel that understand what I'm trying to do and can yes. reflect it in a way back yes. on me yes. so I can take it in and really um, grasp what it's all about, you know? Yes. Because, you know, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, what you call, uh, I don't like the expression clairvoyant people, but we are all having this ability yes. to connect to intuition. But we should remember that whatever information we get, it has to filter down our personality. Yes. And then it comes out. And maybe it's a little twisted because we are not purified yes. or whatever. Or we have misunderstandings of stuff. For example, my teacher, the seer, who was amazing, if there was something that he had some uh, grudge against, for example, he did not like the church or... The, the Catholic Church, and therefore he did not like Jesus. But it meant that he was not able to connect to Jesus and get some proper information about him because he had this grudge against him. It was only when I told him that Jesus actually was named Yeshua yes. and that Jesus was more or less an invention, that yes. Yeshua was the real thing. Yes. He started to, oh, then he could kind of um, di divert Yeshua from the church and say, yes. oh, now I see, you know, yes. and we should t learn from that. And yes. that because all people, even if they don't know it and, and are not interested in, in spiritual things, every day receives information. Whatever they are taking it in or not is another question. Yes. We are all getting information during dreams at night or whatever. Yes. Uh, so that's and the way we play together with other people can have a huge significance in the outcome of what we, how we understand the things, you know? Yes. Lars, you remember you... we were talking about Beatles, uh, Baptist, yes. a lot of the, um, a lot of, uh, especially Lennon's uh, lyrics was very much uh, like a stream of consciousness. Yes. It really much, you know, you, you, you look into his lyrics, you say, it doesn't really mean anything. Yes. yes, it does, but just on another yes. uh, plane, you know, it, yes. it's, he, no. he connected, you know. He, co he connected. Um, Paul McCartney also said in interviews that he never really, uh, you know, composed the songs or wrote them. He just, you know, yeah. channeled them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Black Blackbird, which is an amazing song, is, is a great example. He just he yes, heard the song. Yesterday. Yes, yesterday. Yesterday, yesterday too. And yeah. um, the Beatles, and this is also a parallel with, with you. Um, especially George and John were very interested in spirituality. They spent time mm -hmm. with Marish, Mar Marahishi Mahesh Yogi. They did yeah. transcendental meditation. Uh, and I think that George was really the mystic of the Beatles. Um, yeah. if, if you look at George later on in life, when, when he was not in the Beatles anymore, his music, he made great music. George was a great composer as well. And I always yeah. think, what are the chances that you have three, Paul, John and George, three amazing composers in one band. I mean, that's that's statistically, I think, impossible. But it happened with the Beatles, so they're they're just a miracle. Just that, only that is a, is a miracle. Um, but there seems to be a connection between people um, that are into the into creation, into music, and spirituality. Can you speak a little bit on 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 that? I think music is very spirituality. Yes. I'd be very much uh, connected to spirituality because music is spirituality. If if you understand it, it is. It doesn't need words, and I, I. It's not you know. I love words. It's not that, but there's something in music where you, where this one up here doesn't have to, and if there's no words, then this one can relax for for a moment. And then you, the music goes into the heart, you know, yes. straight to the heart. So um, I have here your book, The Law of Light, mm -hmm. and it's about the secret teachings of Jeshua. 
and mm -hmm. uh, he spoke Aramaic. That was the mm -hmm. um, original um, language in which uh, Jeshua mm -hmm. spoke. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things that he was famous for was saying, seek first uh, the kingdom of heaven within, and then all else will be added on to you. Um, mm -hmm. And you could also say, instead of kingdom of heaven, you could also say, seek first the consciousness or seek first the awareness, and then mm -hmm. all else will be added, added on to you. Yeah. It seems that Jeshua was trying to show us that we should put consciousness first, and then from, from there on, all else will be added on to us. So mm -hmm. if you get the inside right, then the outside will fall into place. Exactly. Can you speak a little bit on that? I think it's so clear, you know, it's so his words are clarifying what uh, our problem is today that we are done the opposite, you know. Most people are so uh, taken by the circumstances and the material um, to and comfort, you know, we want this, we want that, you know, blah, blah, blah. and we totally forget that in at the end of our path, we have to leave naked without anything, you know. So we spend a lot of time piling up a lot of uh, values that have absolutely no value when it comes to it, you know, no lasting value. And we also forget that this life is only as a tiny little uh, part of the whole package, you know, because, you know, in the old mystery schools, for example, of the Essenes, it was said that we have only one life. Yes. but it, it lasts forever yes. so we, we 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 have appearances and then we we go out and then we yes. came come in and you know yes. every time in a new custom and in yes. a new role yes and yes. Um, that's how it and we should also remember you don't have to incarnate here on earth there's many other places you can incarnate yes and but but it, but 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 let's go back to the law of light mm -hmm. um it, when, when you say the law of light, what mm -hmm. is the law of light? It is an unwritten law. Yes. It is a universal law, you could say, that is the, a metaphor for the, the spiritual material, yes. spirit that holds everything together. Yes. You know, light in Aramaic means consciousness. Yes. You see? Yes. So, um, there is a special light that is carrying this consciousness, you know, and this is the same light that the image of God in which we were born is the same thing that Jesus was talking about when he's saying, remember the, heaven, the, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Yes. And when he says, for example, don't put your light underneath a bushel, it means you should really start to broaden your, your consciousness, you know, yes. and get connected to the inner chamber of the heart yes, yes. so uh, these things are so you you need to what he's saying in that uh, quote that you just said what well, is that uh, this is the most important thing yeah go yes. first connect to the kingdom of heaven the problem had been that uh, too many people are thinking of the kingdom of heaven or something up there or somewhere away from them. But it is, as we are told in the New Testament, a state of being within. Yes. So Jesus, he was part of the Essenes um, mm -hmm. very much, right? Um, yeah. You know much more about the Essenes. How did, how did he become part of that? His parents were Essenes. Okay. And you should remember the, the main purpose of the Essenes that started uh, around 500 years before Jesus was to prepare the way for their teacher of righteousness, yes. which were Messiah. Yes. And there were certain signs that they could, uh, they have read, especially in the, uh, the Sartustran scriptures, the Sent scripture, where it stands that uh, you know the signs and you look for the signs and you will find uh, the master and so forth. And they came from the east, meaning from the Qumran at the, the coast of the Dead Sea, where the Dead Sea falls from. Yes. And they, they just rode on camels uh, 10 kilometers to Bethlehem. Yes. And they read the, the, the signs. And in the same way as you find a, a new incarnation of Dalai Lama, 
they went in and, and saw if the signs fitted to that child. Yes. After that, they brought the child, you can read about that in the New Testament, they yes. brought it to the temple in Jerusalem, where there were two other Essenes, Hannah and Simon, who was just waiting. They, they were told, you are not going to, to die before you have seen the Messiah or the teacher. Mm -hmm. And when they brought the, uh, the child of Yeshua, they recognized that it was him, and they said, now we can leave, you know? Mm -hmm. And then they were taken to Egypt, the, mm -hmm. the parents and the child, to, to prepare themselves for what, what was to come, you know? Mm -hmm. So he became at, uh, a pupil of the Essenes mm -hmm. and was raised by them. So in, in, uh, in the New Testament, the New Testament that we know in, let's say, our Western world, mm -hmm. um, there is a Jesus. Uh, I grew up in a Christian tradition, mm -hmm. and I had Bible class in school. Yeah. So the Jesus that um, we know from the Christian New Testament, is it the same Jesus as uh, the Jesus in your book? Or um, are there things described in the New Testament where you feel that it's not correct? Yeah, there is. There's two th main things to begin with yeah. that we should remember that Christians never think about. Yes. Is first and foremost, Yeshua was a Jew. Two, he had never heard about Christianity. Christianity was, Christianity was not invented at the time when he was around. It was invented 325 years after he had left the building, <laughs> so to speak. Yes. You know, yes. that was when they instituted the Christianity. Of course, up to then, there was fragments of, of, uh, of his disciples who, who had different groups. But you should remember, they never called themselves Christians. They called themselves those of the way. It was the Romans who called them Christians, yes. not in a very nice way, you know, but just as, you know, to scorn them, you know. Yes. They're Christians, you know. Christians means those who, who you know, Christ means the, uh, uh, the um, anointed one. Yes. You know, like Messiah yes. in uh, Hebrew means the, the anointed one. Yes. So that is actually what it means. And the, so the Christians were the anointed ones, you know, or those who yes. believe in the anointed yes. ones. So, so did, did he really turn water into wine? Did he walk over water? Did he perform all those miracles? Did that really happen? Yes, I think. But the one thing that is very important to understand is that everything in, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament has metaphorical um, sides to them, yes. you know, because to change water into wine is to take the feminine and uh, invite it into the masculine. You should remember the, the wedding at Cana was yes. Jesus' own wedding yes. to Mary and the Magdalene. Yes. So when he performed that, it was his kind of telling what they were to preach afterwards, because you can read in the Gospel of Thomas where he's talking at ends about the bridal chamber, about the feminine and the masculine, how they, be, when they become one, they can move mountains and stuff like that. So this is very, very much the inner teachings of this, of the merging and the becoming one and opening the inner heart chamber, you know, and all these things, you know, the bridal chamber, you know. So that was very much part of, and another thing, when they were married, from that moment when Mary Magdalene and he was married, they started a three-year mission, you could say, where she was the teacher of the female disciples yes. and he was the male disciples. Yes. Yes. He was actually the one who was supposed to take over the yes. whole thing. Yes. So I think one of the most important things that he tried to convey was that whatever I do, you can do too. He was showing us the way to our own potential. He exactly. was not saying I am special. I can, only I can do this. Um, he was saying you can do this too. Exactly. So he, when he we talk, said, he even said that if you follow my example, you can do even greater wonders than yes. I. 
Yes. And we never we never hear about that in the church, unfortunately. But but Jesus was and is for for a lot of people um, the potential. He sh he's showing us uh, us what our potential is. But it seems very hard for a lot of people to actually really become like Jeshua. Can you explain why that is? Yeah, because first and foremost, we have totally no understanding of what kind of person he was. And we have all these, well, for, first of all, some part of the church say he was, he was God. Yes. He was not only the son of God, he was also God himself. So he yes. was son of himself. Yes. Uh, how can we understand that? There's yes. no way in the scriptures where you can read anything like that, that he was the only begotten son. What you can read is that he was the first one. He was the first soul. He yes. was the chosen one but not the only person. That is why when, when he says in the Gospel of, of John, he says, remember, it is written that you are all gods. Yes. You are all children of God. So he's not the only one. And this is one thing we must remember that we, we need to, to wipe the, the slate clean, you know, and start to see him in fresh, with fresh, with new eyes. And um, that is why I think his real name, Yeshua, makes that very much easier, so much easier, because we can say, Jesus, hmm, it was not the real, the, the real, the, the, the true picture. Yeshua is the true picture. Yes. You can start to see him in the real light, the true light. He was a Jew, and he was practicing Jewish uh, yes. law and prayer and all these things. Yes. So, so why was he so special and, and because we, we we all have the same potential but was mm -hmm. he was he more focused was he more committed was he more um fanatical about uh, the light about consciousness than 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 other people you know no. why why was he so special he was born to this he was he was a soul who had been incarnated many times he was a he was an avatar a okay. messiah Yes. And, and he was our big brother who came yes. to just to show us what potential we had. It was had never been his, it, it was never his intention to build a church or anything. Yes. Nothing could be further away from him. You know, he wanted to set us free, you know, and start to use our potential as healers and prophets and dancers and storytellers and whatever we, you know, something that could could open up uh, opportunities we we all come here to share our special gift that we are given you have been given your gift i'm being given everybody has been given but we tend to stand up and say oh look at her and him i wish i could be like him yes and forget our own gifts you know instead there is there are people you know who were born in this life to stand up on a stage you know yes. in golden uh, costumes and get a lot of credit for this and that. Yes. But that's not all of us. Yes. Some, uh, they work in silence, in being invisible. Yes. But nevertheless, they are doing brilliant work. You know? yes. My team with the seer, he, he, if I did not, if I hadn't written about him, he yes. would have been totally unknown. Yes. And th there yeah. are many in this world who are totally unknown and who do yeah. The work I know also uh, other seers who work yes. in yes. behind the scenes, you know, yes. and and they're, they're not interested in attention or fame. No, of course not. It's yes. because they know it. It's you know, there's so much childish play going on, also in the so called spiritual community. Yes. Yes. A lot of ego, you know, and yes. a lot of things that is tiresome, you know, and yes. you know, you you easily lose your your um, uh, patience. You know? Because yes. we, we want to go forward you know, now. We, we want now is the time to really start to, to do the serious work. Yes. But was and it when, when you were a, a pop singer, you have been in the center of attention for a while. Oh, so you, yeah, you, know, yeah. you know what that is. Exactly. Was it necessary for you uh, in order to be in the center of attention for you know, a time in your life in order to, to do what you do now? You should remember, I have no education whatsoever. I was raised on the, on the, on the, in, in showbiz, you know. Yes. True rock and roll. Yes. So if you don't, and I, you need to you make a living, 
you know? Yes, yes, so yes. I, had, uh, I had an identity there and I made a living there. I had my life there and I had also a special, some kind of freedom. What I understand now is that I learned so much for being there, just to step on, uh, upon a stage, you know, yes. and stand in front of thousands of people and just to, to be grounded and to, to, to be focused on what I'm there to do, you know. And I, can, I know that it had helped me in my work today. Yes. So that is how it, it fits in, you know. Yes, in, in it, my... it, it, it helps you to be on stage, to be a speaker, to communicate your message. Yeah, and also yeah. without being losing my mind or, you yes. know, you know, yes. to stay grounded and do yes. what I can do. You know? Yes, yes. So the law of light is the secret teachings of, of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, how can we, what can we do to become more like Jesus? You, you just said that he was an avatar. So he was a more, you, maybe we can say he was a more developed soul who, yeah. who, who, who built his uh, capacities through many lifetimes. Mm -hmm. um, but 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 so everyone seems to be on another level with, without one level being better than another one. But um, how can we become like Jesus? What can we do? Follow his example. Yes. You can start by reading the New Testament. Then you can read uh, uh, the Law of Light. You can read um, uh, the Gnostic Gospels. You know, and you will start to find out what that man is all about. But of yes. course, it takes. I've also re uh, written a book called um, um, "The Wisdom of a Broken Heart." Yes, it's, I, I try to um, concentrate on the Gnostic Gospels yes. and their inner teachings. Uh, the Law of Light is very much Jesus' teaching seen through my studies of the Aramaic language, which is to me the key to the scriptures. You know. Yes. and the psychology behind uh, everything. But Jeshua wanted to set us free. He's saying, listen, you have got some gifts. Please take those gifts. Look at what, how I have, what I have done. And you do the same in your way, you know? Go out and share those gifts, you know? And don't, you don't need any payment or you don't need to be so... Um, so concentrated on what is what what is in it for me you know that is what everybody said uh, yeah but, but would you like to come and share your gift you know yeah but what is in it for me yes. i mean of course you should be paid for what you do yes. but you know um, you should not be so focused on it you know yes i, I think sometimes you know um when you, for example, you, I'm setting books at my, my uh, workshops and my talks, you know, uh, because that's a good place for people who are interested. Yes. And sometimes, you know, there are people who haven't got any money, you know, and please help yourself. And if you find, uh, find some money one day, send it to me yes. or, or whatever, you know, not to be so, you know, um, yes. uh, you know, because it, it opens up when you are, when you can give from an honest heart. You know? Yes, unconditionally. Yeah, then yes. things start to open on all levels. You know? Yes, I mean, and even if you look at, because you said, you know, if we want to become like Jesus, we should follow his example. Um, he never asked for money. He, he, did, he just did, did his healings. He performed his, what we call miracles. Um, um, he was not interested in material stuff, I think. He didn't want to, I mean, he, he, he didn't want to live in a big palace or a big mansion um, no. because he, know, he knew what his power was, mm -hmm. I think. And he was mm -hmm. like, you know, I can manifest whatever I want. So talking about that, um, I saw your documentary, The Seer, and um, The Seer is, of course, uh, the person that is also a great healer and mm. in the in, in in documentary you also see that sometimes he's frustrated when he's not able to heal someone and then really the personality comes up as well you know so yeah. you saw you saw the, the the gifts of the soul and and the potential that he had but you could also see that he's a real person who liked uh, his glass of wine and who liked the good life and his his, his jazz music and everything mm. um can you speak a little bit on how healing 
when it when it really works how that takes place what happens can you talk a little bit about if you will the mechanics of healing yeah it, for example when you name uh kelly de Montsecure, my teacher this yep. year um every morning he went into his office you know at eight yes. o'clock from eight to nine and people were phoning him all over the world and he was just healing people and he could he could diagnose them through the telephone you know but you know he somehow uh, left all his personal issues and his personality in many ways outside the office and uh, were able to go in there and, and in some way um, he, you know, he, he started his day by saying, I hereby dedicate myself to the universe. And for him, that meant that to him, he spoke to the universe. To him, God was in the universe, you know. He spoke to the, the powers of the universe. He kind of um, dedicated himself to it, you know. He said, the universe needs us, you know, needs the, the, our attention and our focus, you know. So he was connected to the to universal power, so to speak, you know. And he, um, if people they phoned him and said, "Please, uh, they have given me the doctors have given me three months to live in. I have cancer. Can you help me?" Of course, he said, without any you no. Know, yes, of course. And from that moment on, the healing started, you know, because people they felt, "Oh, we have come to the right place," you know. Yeah. So he was never like. You know, this could be the secret, what I'm telling you now. Yes. He never gave up, you know, like this. He gave it up, you know, which is a total, uh, the, uh, another kind of attitude, you know. You mean, like, you, you, you mean like surrendering or you mean like... He's surrendering to, up, you know, you can surrender to, 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 to hopelessness, you know, yes. but you can also surrender to God or to yes. universal powers. Yes. Yes. So that was uh, that is very much what is happening, you know, when, yes. when healing goes on. It is that, that the healer has no doubt. It doesn't matter. You don't have even to have a, a, any kind of uh, technique. Yes. It is just you who take upon your responsibility in that moment for being the channel towards a person who, can, yes. who is so sick that he or her cannot kind of help themselves you know yes. so they need somebody to go in and say yes you're come to the right place i will i will help you there's no problem with it and the healer knows if the healer is saying that it's not him or her who's doing it yes. but the the healy the the patient needs to think that it is you yes but you so, must never you must you must never celebrate yourself as the one who's doing it you, because you you're the vessel yeah you know exactly what your role in this is and uh, that is uh, when you understand it things starts really to to develop and you connect you can connect anywhere in the supermarket uh, wherever you are you can you, you you are able to to connect and that's the beautiful thing about it you, you don't have to go to a church you have, you have your own church with you wherever you go yes. so if you are able to distance yourself from any noise that is around you or within you yes. and disconnect people can come to you in the supermarket in the midst of a rock and roll concert and you put your hand on and say yes. of course yes. but I, I, i'm trying to understand what exactly he was doing when he uh, uh when he started the healing was he just you know calling on um on angels or no was... no, no, no 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 he was connecting on into the ether, you know. Yes. You know when when you this program that you you are doing now, yes. it is sent somewhere out in the universe, you know, yes. through what through the ether. Yes. That information that is sent out there, we are not able to see it with our yes. naked eyes. Yes. But we have accepted that it is there somewhere. Yes. There's radio signals all, everywhere around us. Information you cannot see it. We know it's there. Because when we come home, we open for the radio. Oh, yeah, there it is. Yes. Just think that everything that you send out also travels yes. by the ether yes. and is received by someone somewhere. And if you start to work with these forces, you know, 
like on the ethereal plane. Yes. That is where healing is, is taking place, you know. And your thoughts and your behavior, everything you do is recorded there, you know. Yes. It sets a mark. It's in, in the Eastern, it's called Akashic Records. Yes. In our tradition, it's called the Book of Life, you know. Yes. And we are writing it every day, every moment of our life. I, I, so I, you connect with these powers, and in that way, you connect to uh, uh, another person, wherever that person is. Are you aware of the work of Edgar Casey? Because you just mentioned oh, yeah. records. Yeah, I had um, a big role in, in my work. You have the Edgar Casey Institute in Virginia Beach, uh, and I, mm -hmm. I had the CEO uh, of the Edgar Casey Institute. I had to, I had him also on the show. And uh, Edgar Casey said that everything is recorded in the Akashic records. Mm -hmm. um, and Edgar Casey was, of course, called the sleeping prophet. Mm -hmm. And um, he had to be in a state of sleep in order to, you know, to channel. And then someone was sitting next to his bed and, you know, was writing whatever he was saying. And after the sessions, he never remembered what, what he had said. Exactly. Uh, but it seems that he was able to do that because his 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 his, his personality or his ego or his, his his conscious personality was not there so the bigger part soul uh, or the subconsciousness or whatever you would like to call it was able to do the work so mm -hmm. it seems that uh, we all have this god potential um, mm -hmm. but we have to turn off something in order to access this you know the seer my teacher he was doing exactly the same, but he did not have to sleep in order to do it. Yes. He could also, for example, I could give him your name, yes. and he would give me a, a precise um, uh, declaration on you, on your physical situation, on yes. your psychology, uh, and, and your spiritual yes. uh, situation, yes. without even knowing or I never met you or anything, just yes. by your name. And, I could tell him he's in in Holland now, for example, yes, yes. and that was how he was working. Yes. So he, he was he was tapping into the Akashic records immediately into the Book of Life. He said, like yes. Edgar Casey, yes. what he called the Book of Life. Yes. So, are you with, without comparing, of course, but are are you on that same level in terms of healing, or is that not your focus? Yes, it is very much, but I'm. Yeah. You know, I, I, I worked seven years uh, every day for seven years as a healer, as part of my education with him. Yes. But um, I was more mentioned to, he called me the scribe, you know, yes. because I have always in, in, in many incarnations also been instrumental in writing the, the Dead Sea Scrolls yes. in, in the incarnation. So he yes. called me always the scribe. Yes. And uh, so I was, I was supposed to to my, um, what do you call it, my, um, um, to my writings and to my music to reach people in that way, you know. Yeah. And nowadays I do my, uh, I do healing workshops where people also are getting healed from being there, you yes. know, They're doing the work and trying to open hearts in that way. Yes. So uh, the seer is, of course, he has passed, um, but of course the soul lives on. Yeah. Um, are you still in connection with him in terms of that you, you maybe dream of him or that maybe he visits you oh, sometimes? I, I, I think about him, of him very so often, but he said, you know, which what we, I joked uh, with him a lot, that he was leaving. He was not coming back this time. And he was leaving the universe yes. uh, at some time. And I said, I always joke with him about it, you know, yes. so, ah, do you? But um, actually, Th that this is a, a long story, but I don't want to bore it with you. But at one point, I was uh, sent to Montségur to do a certain um, a ceremony there, there that we used to do. Yes. And from that moment on, I, that was the last I heard of from him. Then he left the universe, as he yes. said so. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have here your other book, the O Manuscript, mm -hmm. the Seer, the Magdalene, uh, the Grail. Mm -hmm. It says this book. I I I, um, I I think I got it in 2015. Mm -hmm. For our audience, for the people who have not read the book, um, who is this on the cover of the book? 
it's the picture of the world mother, or it is the a kind of essence of all the big female uh, priestesses and teachers throughout. And um, for people who have not read the book, what what is the book about? The seer is about my my meeting and my working with the seer. Yes. The Magdalene is uh, also continuously about my work with him, but also the story of the true story of Magdalene, Mary Magdalene and Yeshua. Yes. And the Grail is a book about the Grail, but also on in my work in France uh, and my meeting with uh, a priestess uh, in Denmark called Sylvia yes. that was foretold already in the 80s in yes. England that I should meet her. So, and it's, you know, it, there's so much information in these books that I, I have no track of them, you know. There's so much of it, especially in the Magdalene yes. and the great books, that I have no recollection of writing. Yes. So that was part of my kind of uh, connection to the Book of Life, you could say. Yes. And there's so much information there that, that um, I would say you don't need to go anywhere else if you want to know about the mystery school that, for example, Mary the Magdalene were, were, were attending, because I haven't read anything that um, that is going in that direction. You know, I've read a lot of some fancy stuff, but uh, yes. I really believe that this is the, as as close to the to the truth that you can get. Yes. So, so the mystery schools. Would you say that the the Essenes and their community was also a mystery school? Yes. Yes. Of yes. course. Yes. So, and, uh, um, what is still left from the Essenes uh, in terms of communities in the world right now? Can you speak a little bit on that? I think, for example, if you should take a, a, something that I am certain about, a lot of the Quakers, yes. you know, the Quaker movement. Yes. And a lot of Essenes, Essene uh, tradition within yes. them yes. Um, that I really, really appreciate. I really, really like the, the way they are working with yes. things, you know. Um, unfortunately, there haven't been a Quaker movement where I have been, but I am a member of, of, of a congregation in London. I have never attended, but I'm, I'm, I feel a, a very strong connection to it. But then there's um, the Essene, um, today there are different Essene communities, uh, new Essene movements, especially in America, I think, that ha is very uh, centered around health, uh, yes. pure food and all these things. Yes. But there's another, um, I'm more interested in the mystical, Yes. Uh, uh, side of it and the healing and all these things, you know, yes. prophecy. Yeah, there, there is sometimes, um, it's sometimes hard to see whether something is pure and something is good. For instance, um, you might have heard of John of God from Brazil. Yeah. Yes. And um, Oprah, Oprah Winfrey, of course, you know who that is. She went there with a the, with the crew. Uh, and everyone was dressed in white and he did he was able to do some astonishing healings and then at the same time there's also and i don't want to go into it but there was a lot of negative news about him as well um, mm -hmm. so at this at the one point he was able to channel and do you know miraculous healings and then there's the dark side as well in this person can you speak a little bit on that or um, because it's very I confusing for the audience the problem with John of God, you know, it, this is not to be self-righteous in any way, but I have never really felt any kind of attraction to to, yes. to him when I first heard about him. Yes. I always thought there was a kind of shadow lying yes. somewhere over there. And I think, you know, it, again, you know, when the ego takes over, when you, a lot of people who are in the, in the, um, what you would call so-called uh, spiritual community, Yes. If they experience some kind of success, you know, then the ego takes over, you know, yes. they're not prepared for it, you know, they're not prepared for maybe they have hit something and suddenly, you know, and um, yeah, what can I say about it? It's just that uh, then you start to, what you have been given will be taken from you. 
again, you know, somehow. And that is what's happened with, I think, with John of God and also with that guy in, what's the name, of Sai Baba, you know, yeah. who also were, were, had something, you know, when they had too much taken of their, on, of their own superiority, superiority you know, their, yes. their supernatural uh, abilities and stuff. Yes. And, you know, then it, it gets noisy and it yes. gets quirky, you know. Yes. And it, it comes back to you. Yes. That is why it's so important to, you know, and I know it's it's really, really a lot of people would would not understand why I could say a thing. But but an old Catholic Catholic book called the um, the example of Jesus, you know, or the what was the name of it? Just hang on. Yes, sure. The, the imitation of Christ. Yes. A book like imitation. Who not, is not a, initiation, but imitation, right? Yeah, the imitation, the imitation of yeah, Christ, yeah, yes. which is you know follow my example and you do it. But that is in many ways very rigid, you know, and it's very not many people can live up to it. But it was written in, I think, by a Dutch, a Dutch monk, uh, already in the nineteen. 1950, in 1500s, you know, something for other monks. So, of course, you have to interpret it into our days, but it is very much a grounding book for me. And it keeps you your feet on the ground at the same time and your heart open, you know. Yes. It, it is, in, in a way, a book of Bodhisattva, you know, a Bodhisattva book, if you, you know, the a bodhisattva is somebody who comes in, who incarnates, not for the benefits of himself or herself, but for the benefits of all mankind. You know, yes. a kind of servant, I could say. I don't, I know, I don't like the, the the word servant, but you know, is here to kind of really share the gifts. You know, yes. and um, will, will not be at any time be interested in gold or or uh, social. Um, you know, position and all these things. Status and that's, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I think when people start to understand that there is a really, really, you need really, really to be able to balance. And when you, the, the, the tempter, the temptation is when you, you get success to how to handle it and how to not let it affect you too much. You can celebrate this and you can celebrate that. And there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, you all love to dance, you know, and have fun and stuff. And we should do that anytime. But uh, you know what I mean. I think people know what I mean when I'm it, saying it. It, it is, uh, you know, through the power of the heart, I had the, 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 the opportunity to, to interview, you know, the, the, the big spiritual teachers of our time, at mm -hmm. least the famous ones, let's say, the yeah. Deepak Chopra mm -hmm. and the Eckhart Tolle's. And mm -hmm. um, I, I noticed, for instance, someone like Eckhart Tolle is really very grounded and very yeah. himself. Of uh, course. And he's, you know, when, when I spent two days with him uh, at his mm -hmm. um, holiday home on Salt Spring Island, and there was only one book, mm -hmm. the, the, red, the Red Book uh, by Carl Jung. That was the only book oh, yeah. there. And... Um, you know, he was drinking wine and smoking cigars and he was very much, you know, we, we were just, he's, he's German, we, we were just having fun. Uh, and he said, you know, but, but, but when he goes on stage and there's thousands of people uh, in front of him, he goes there and he starts to open up and channels because he doesn't know what he's going to say. He just, he never prepares. He just, boom, he goes there and everyone is in awe and everyone is hanging on his lips um so he realized totally that it's not him it's just whatever he's opening up exactly. and exactly. He, he's incredibly grounded um mm -hmm. and i saw some other i'm not going to mention names who were much more into the you know in the ego uh, mm. but but eckhart tolle was the i thought the real deal yeah i think so too yeah yeah it was beautiful beautiful to see um mm. i think you know jesus is is, is, is maybe the the most famous person that ever ha, has ever lived on our planet maybe other than maybe the buddha and mm -hmm. uh, the buddha 
Um, mm -hmm. I, I think if you really look at the Buddha, he was not looking for enlightenment. He was looking for a way out of suffering. You know, if, mm -hmm. if you read his story. For Jesus, it was different. I don't think that Jesus was per se looking for a way out of suffering. Um, I think he, he was more here to be an example. Uh, Buddha, mm -hmm. Buddha came, became an example, but Jesus was here to be an example. Is that correct? I think the most important message of Jesha was that he came here and said, listen, you are already enlightened. Yes. Because the, the kingdom of heaven is within you. Yes. Please don't put that light underneath a bushel. Go out now and start to work with it and share it. But the, we are looking for something that maybe doesn't exist, you know. Yes. We don't see what is there. We are looking for something else. And when we find out that, oh, it's so simple, oh, it is in, within me, and we start to find out, yeah, it is. It's within reach, but you have to work for it. Yes. You need to have some kind of practice yes. and to stick to it, you know. Yes. It doesn't say you should you should uh, do this, you should do that. Find a way, yes. your way, yes. towards it yes. and stick to it. And it is this uh, sticking to something that we, you know, when it gets to Monday, we think, hmm, I'm bored. What else can I do? Yes. I need something that is more colorful. Or So I try a little Buddhism, and I go for that until that gets boring. And I think Sufism is the is this a real yes. thing, you know. Yes. And I go for that. You know? So you are able to, I mean, it, there's nothing wrong with uh, shopping, you know, and take a little bit from Sufism and so forth. But at one point, you need to take your own inner life serious, yes. you know, and you can call it for me whatever you want, yeah. as long as you are genuinely uh, wanting to open up for that enlightenment, so it can start to shine up, yes. and it makes a whole lot of difference because we don't even have to do that much, you know, with yes. it. Just if it can only shine freely, we yes. can really change this world, you know. Yes, it's not yes. about. Jesus, um, if you look at depictions of Jesus, many times um, you see him pointing at the heart, and you sometimes see a mm -hmm. red heart in Christian tradition, especially. Um, when our heart is open, and when I mean um, our heart is open, I mean when we are in gratitude, when we experience love, our heart is open, um, and we are in a different energy than when we are uh, in pain or when we are frustrated or when we are angry or when, and when we are in fear. So when mm -hmm. we are in love and gratitude and when we feel it in our body, mm -hmm. there's a totally mm -hmm. different energy. Um, mm -hmm. What is the role of the heart? Um, you know, what is the role of the heart in, in, in the teachings of, 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 of Jeshua? The heart is the bridal chamber. It's a, it's a metaphor for for the feminine also very much, you know, yes. and, and the third eye is very much uh, for the masculine, you know, yes. and when they two get together, you know, for example, you can do a practice where you inhale through the heart yes. and you put it up here and you exhale through the third eye, you know, yes. so you take something in and let it be purified by the heart. This is just a, a practice, you know, yes. and you project it out in the world again. Yes. through the third eye. Yes. In that way, the feminine and the masculine work together. Yes. So you can start to work with mantras. For example, you can say, take an um, Aramaic uh, mantra that maybe Jeshua also used. Ugar Kutcha, this means Holy Spirit. Malkuta de Shemaya, Kingdom of Heaven. You know? So you, you, you inhale Holy Spirit, in order to activate the inner kingdom of heaven that you project out around you, yes. creating a, a sacred space, you know. Yes. And that is, for example, something that is in the book of uh, the Law of Light, you know, where you, you, you will get the knowledge about how you can start to work with this language of Jesus or Yeshua. And it really make, it, it, it makes wonders, you know, it really creates wonders, you know. Yes. You can use it in your healing. You can use it to, you know, so many. Yes. So, so, so when it comes to healing, um, I think that 
consciousness in terms of what we think in terms mm. of um you know you you, you can hold you, you can think about someone with love right mm -hmm. that in itself can be very healing if you, if you send loving mm -hmm. thoughts towards someone you, you, we all know it you know it's yes. you send a smile to someone yes. that maybe it could be in the supermarket the lady that sit behind the cashier Yes. And I mean, she's sitting there all day and takes a lot of shit for many people, maybe. Yes. A smile and a, some tenderness and some, um, you know, it yes. can change a whole situation yes. like this, you know. And it costs nothing. And we should just think about it sometimes, even when we as ourselves are down and out that day, it yes. can change our life too yes. by doing it. You know, yes. so instead of going in, oh, I haven't got much money, you know, yes, you should maybe take that last 100 gilly, gulden, or whatever. It's yeah, we, we all have euro now, I think. Do, yeah, do, uh, take you, that you, 50, you have still the Danish that, uh, 50 uh, or 20 yeah. euros, you, you yeah. the only one you have, and give it to somebody who needs it, you know? and you will see, wow, no, yes. it, it makes a whole lot of difference, yes. Yes. it really does yes that that's true so um right now i mean we, we are living in in, in um very uh, interesting and and for for many people challenging times right now um mm -hmm. i think we're going through a big uh, transition um mm -hmm. some people call it the great reset um how i mean a lot of people are not really uh, happy how our society is changing right now Mm -hmm. um and 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 they are awake uh and with awake i mean they are feeling that something um is not right something uh is not um maybe good for the soul uh mm -hmm. some, something is going to a more technocratic civilization um where um we become less human where we become more um transhuman um mm -hmm. yeah. uh, our, our, our society is completely changing and they call it um, the the great reset um mm -hmm. how should we cope with it how should we stay in touch with our hearts and with our souls i mean by not taking part of of those things that we are opposed which you know Okay. I mean, don't take part of it if you can. I mean, it is a, it is a technological society that is being built, and it's re the result of many many years of of materialistic thinking. You know, even within the spiritual realm, so to speak, it's very materialistic. Okay. So this is something that only you as a, a person can can uh, answer what do you want from life yes. and act accordingly and seek people who want the same thing and maybe start to build a new and i think it's it, of course it's important to to see where there is no truth but everywhere where there's no truth you could provide the truth or you can instead of pointing out that there's a problem come with a solution you know yes. Because that would be positive, you know. Instead of saying, "Oh, that's wrong, this wrong, this wrong, this wrong," yes. here's the solution for this. Yes. But I think the solution for everything is that we can start to connect with our spiritual life and to with our inner kingdom of heaven. Yes. If we don't, okay, then I mean, everything we are in the midst of now is the result of all the choices we have made as yes. a, as a human uh, as humankind, you know. Yes. So. And it, it, it seems to me that in many times of true, also true history, that we need to go right to the edge before we stop and find, oh, yes. oh, there was actually nothing now. The, the road ends here. Yes. What to do? Yeah. Yes. We were told many years ago that we should try to do something else, but we, we were so taken up by our own comfort and you are, well, our own ways, you know, so we... Did not pay attention so now it's time to pay attention i think the time now is saying pay attention to what's happening and act accordingly 
take care of your inner life. If you can um, open up your heart and your life can shine up, it will inspire other people to do the same. Yes. And I think that's what, what we should do, actually. Yes, yes. So, so, so are you saying to humanity, the only way through this is to go inside? Both, you know, we should yes. also have an eye of what is happening around us, of course. Yes. Yes. And if we, every time we meet somebody who needs our help, we should provide it if we are able to do it. Yes. But I think not. We should take care. We should not uh, say yes and be part of something that we are opposed to. Yes. You know, we should not. Uh, uh, no, especially no. We shouldn't. So, but at the same time, we we have this God potential. So we have the potential to overcome this and to transform this even. Yeah, we have. Yes. If it's not being squenched or if it's not being totally uh, dissolved by the ego and within us, you know, and being totally wiped out, you know. Yes. yes. Because that's another thing that people are not aware of that, yes, we live forever, but hmm, there is a but. Because We should take care of ourselves, and the yes. time is now. Yes. That's but, my... but you say there is a is a but. We live forever, but yeah, we still can die in this yeah. physical body. Is that what you're saying? Or no, we all of us have to leave this body yes. at some point. I mean, yes. no doubt about that. But we need to take care of ourselves. Yes. And we need to take care of our spiritual gifts and the gift we were given, you know, and not be so taken by, by materialistic and greed and comfort and all this shit, you know, it doesn't mean that we, we, sh we are here to dance, we are here to sing, we are here to celebrate life, but not to be greedy and not to be scared shit about all the thing that's going on, but to be in life, to share our gift with the world and all other beings, you know? Yes. And that is positively meant. Yes. Of, and if we don't do it, you know, we will, we will pay a horrific price on, on all levels, you know, personal and in general, in, in a collective plane, you know? And right now the human, humankind seems to be really, to be very close to the edge. So now it is time for the wise man and wise woman to step forward and say, okay, now the work begins. Yes. And, and, and we need to do it ourselves. We cannot wait for someone else to do it, right? No, there's only you who can do it. Yes. You can get inspiration from whatever, you know, but in the end, you know, your experience are your experience. And your experience can maybe inspire me, yes. but I have to experience my way in order to say, now I know what you talk about. If I take a book and, th and, and believe that I can read, uh, I mean, if you want to learn to, to, to ride a bike, you cannot take a book. And, there is no book that says, learn to ride a bike. You need to hop on the bike and you fall off, you get up, you fall off, you get up. And at one time, Oh, now I can do it. You experience what it is. What you can read afterwards is the traffic rules, you know? So that's how it goes, you know? You, you must also learn to, to practice your spiritual life. What is it? Get some experience. And then you can read some books and read the law of light, you know? Yes. There is rules in the spiritual life also. Yes. The first step, of course, is to realize that your true identity is the spirit. You are not the body. You are maybe living in the body, but we you are, are the spirit. Soul. We are souls, we are spirits who live in a body. And when we, that body is uh, not able to, to breathe anymore, we leave the body and go back home where we come from until we um, come back in another guise and in another you know, with a new role, you know, that ho hopefully fits into the pattern of what we wanted to do in the first place, you know. Yes. The fact that we are spirits also 
explains our potential because mm -hmm. if you're just a body um there's no such thing as multi-sensory perception there's no such, such thing as intuition there's no such thing as foresight there's no such thing as um feeling what's going to happen in the future there's no such thing as synchronicity you know synchronicity mm -hmm. was this word coined by carl jung and it means that you know something happens and at first you think oh this is a coincidence but you feel on a deeper level there's there's purpose there's power there's meaning behind it um and i i i feel that um if we start to identify with the spirit with the soul again it's a total shift in identity of course but it's also a total shift in the knowing about what your potential is mm -hmm. yes exactly nothing yeah. is coincidental yes Everything has a purpose, you know, yes. and we have a purpose also towards each other, you know, people meeting may be only for 10 minutes, but it can be the most important meeting for both of them or for one of them, yes. without knowing at the time, you know, yes. they pass each other, they never see each other again, and then one of them said, there was something there, yes. there was something, and that person would go back home and start to write down what it was. Yes. And maybe make uh, write a book about yes. that thing, you know. Yes. So, you know, if we need to be awake, you know. Yes. Yes. So, so can you share some uh, a story uh, out of your own life um, where you had a very powerful synchronicity, where something really happened, and you felt okay? There's purpose. There's power. There's meaning behind this. Oh, my life is full of that. You know, I don't know where to start. You know, it's for example the book I received when I was fourteen years old from yes. a from a total stranger that I don't know anything about. Who sent that to me? Yes. Where did it come from? And why me? I mean, yes. was it an accident or no? Yes. Um, I, I mean, I don't know where to start. You know, I had for example one day, I um. One morning in Copenhagen, I had this feeling, I, I, I was there to go into a meeting. So I had this feeling when I woke up, oh, I need to go to mass in a church, which I'd never done before. So as I asked in, in the, in the um, reception, uh, is there a church nearby? They said, yeah, there is a Catholic church just around the corner. The Christ of, of, of Jesus, Jesus' heart, you know, yes. Sacre Coeur. Yeah. So I went there, and you know you have to take a, a kind of you know the bread for the yes, 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 yes. you know if you want yes. to go up there. Yes. But I did not. I just sat down on in at the end of the in the back of the church and started to meditate. Then the priest come in and he start his. I remember his voice was so irritating because the the speakers were not very good, you know. Yes. And suddenly. I feel a hand on my shoulder, you know, really like, yes. Pow. yes. I turn around, there's nobody. And then I see, you know, like Jesus holding his heart towards me. And then I start to cry. Yes. And I'm crying so hard, you know, that everybody is turning around and looking at me, even though I try to hide it, you know. Yes. And the next thing I remember is I'm standing in line in order to go up for the mass and get the, but there's no bread for me because I did not pick one when I came in. So now I, the priest, he looks at me and we are around 50 people standing in line. Yes. How should he know that I did not pick a bread? Yes. So he takes up a bread and he just breaks it in two. Yes. Holding up, there's now one for you. Yes. You know, how could he know? Yes. And after, you know, when I took, had that uh, bread and the wine, I went out there and I was totally purified, totally yes. like zero, you know. Yeah. I didn't owe anybody anything and nobody owed me yes. anything. Yes. And it was so amazing, you know. Wow. Accident, it, uh, incidents like that, I have tried many times. Yes. For example, when I wrote the book uh, of Mary Magdalene, it was a summer night and I was around, you know, in the end of the book. So I went down for a walk and suddenly I was outside another Catholic church in house and I saw people go in there. So I also went in and the, the chairs were standing in a circle. 
And I was the only one sitting in one side. There was only four or five people on the other side. Yes. Then the priest comes in, turns around to, towards me and says, yes. today is Mary Magdalene's day. Yes. And then he turns around and starts to talk. Wow. I mean, how can this be? You know? yes. So at that moment, I knew, first, I, I found out by that, that this, the 22nd of uh, July is Mary Magdalene's day. Yes. But it was also the day I went back home and finished that book. You know, incidences like that, I have, I have so many of them, you know, it's, it's all over my life. Wow. Things like that happen to me all the time. So did you, when, when you, when you said Jesus was in front of me, was it, how, how was it like an apparition uh, of Jesus? Um, did you really see him in the flesh? I saw him as an, in, in a kind of etheric way. Okay. You know. Yes. And many years later, I found a picture yes. in an old shop that yes. totally uh, resembled that experience. You know? Wow! Yes. You have it? Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. that. That picture I found, I think, twenty years later. Wow! Yes. I, I had a feeling I had to go into a shop in Aarhus, and I know when I got that feeling, there's something for me. I looked around, you know, on the walls, and I could not see anything. So I said to the lady, okay. And then my foot stumbled on something that, that fell over. Yes. And when I turned it on, that picture was wow. looking at me. And that heart was again there. And I just had a shock, you know. It, you know. So it was like coming in again, you know, that yes. maybe as a remembrance, remember, yes. remember this, you know. Yes. So, so energetically, what happened to you? Did it bring you? Uh, did it bring you in a on a deeper level of connection with your soul? Or what, what? no, it's just you. I, you know, to me, it's often like this that you know something happens, and just it isn't before much later I start to find out what it was all about, you know, yes. and start to understand what it was, you know. Yes. Even when I read my, when I wrote my books, you know, on uh, Magdalene and the Grey, I did not know at the time what it was. Yes. I just followed suit, you know, yes. wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote. And afterwards, I started, you know, when I started to do talks about Mary Magdalene yes. and my version of that story, people, they came up on page 246, you say this and that. What do you mean by that? Yes. I said, I don't know, excuse me, can I see that? Yes. Yeah, here. Yeah. And I, I, I'm sorry, I have no recollection that I've written this, but, but I think it means this or that, you know. Yes. You need, in that way, you know. So many afterwards, I start to find out what things are all about, you know. And for example, the, these things like the heart with, um, with Jesus, it moves me on a deep, deep level, you know, of opening up to gratitude yes. uh, towards everything, you know, for life, for towards all the people I have known, you know, and I met so many different people, you know, but, you know, it's like one gift after the other, you know, yes. and these are the things that is being opened in me, you know, uh, by incidents like, for example, I went to Syria in 2002, to the biggest monastery in Syria for nuns. I think there's over a thousand nuns there. Yes. And on that specific day, uh, they honored a special uh, icon that was uh, instrumental in making, if, if yes. women cannot get uh, pregnant, they can go there and sleep overnight and they will be able to be pregnant after. I found a small, what you call, Volga icon you know, yes. that was hanging on the wall. And yes. it just spoke to me. It was hanging in the shadows. Yes. And then the leader of the, the, the monastery came to me and said, uh, mm, I think she belongs to you. And I can show you. Yes, please. Oh, it is beautiful. a piece of cardboard. Yes. And it is, it, she said, this is, has been hanging here for 50 years. Wow. For 50 years, 50 years ago, a nun came, a, a young novice, and yes. she found this piece of cardboard, yes. and it's broken. 
you see here. Yes. And that is why we call it the Madonna of the Broken Heart. Oh, wow. Yes. And um, she made this beautiful frame and everything, and it's been hanging here for 50 years. But I think it belongs to you because you're the first one who have noticed it. So she took it down and gave it to me. So when I was uh, walking out of the, the, the monastery, there was a, a young novice who followed me out and she said, when I left the, the monastery, she said, maybe it will interest you to know that the one who made it was the, the, the leader of, who, who gave you this tonight, you know? So she made that 50 years ago. And, um, you know, things like that, it just moved me. This uh, icon had, had uh, afterwards I took it to, um, to, um, to um, in, in all, outside Damascus, there is a stigmata called Myrna of mm -hmm. Sufnia. I don't know if you have heard about her. She also had uh, uh, Maria apparitions. Yes. And she placed it in her, she also have an icon that is uh, uh, crying oil, you know, and have a lot of apparitions. And she's the most documented stigmata in the world today. You know, she, every um, Easter she bleeds from, uh, from the hands and the head and the side and the feet, you know, and all this. And she said, well, while she was blessing it, it started to to smell of roses. Wow. And she, she said, if you will take care of this, she will take care of you. Wow. And so many wonderful things have happened when I've been working in front of this, for example. Yeah. Uh, you can see a video on my YouTube channel is, who is called The Coming of the, the, um, of the Female uh, the, co the coming of the female um, um, energy or something like that, and, and the song of Mariam Mara. There's, uh, there's also a lot about this icon. Wow. So these are the things, you know, that happens to have happened to me. Also, I meet people, you know, that it will be instrumental in, in many things, you know, and nothing is, is coincidental. It's all there's a purpose towards everything. Hmm. But you can feel it. Yeah. Um, this is not something that we have to understand here, but we have to understand it here in the heart. Exactly. I always th think that when the intellect cannot follow anymore, that's where the spiritual starts. You know, yes. that's actually where the spirituality starts. Yes. We, we somehow have to bypass this one. Yes. It's good when we have to process things and we have to share it with each other and we are talking, of course, the faculties of the brain and the intellect. Yes. But when we go into deep, deep meditation or to whatever we are practicing, we need to leave that, bypass it somehow, and then we will connect on a higher level. Ab absolutely. I also feel it in our, in our conversation that now the energy is shifting because we are more talking from an energetic um, perspective than just mm -hmm. from, okay, here are the questions and we're going to talk about it. And mm -hmm. so now yeah. there is a more energetical exchange. Exactly. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I have learned is that, you know, uh, following, you know, we have so many um, uh, sayings in our language, you know, my heart yeah. is not into it. And uh, I want mm. to follow my heart, but following mm. your heart means, I think, following your aliveness, following the energy, you know, mm. um, approaching yeah. life from a more energetical perspective uh, that, mm. you know, we're actually living in the soup of energy. And let's, let's, let's see, you know, on what uh, frequency do we want to vibe? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you I are agree. really speaking in energy. And um, when you're opening up, the energy comes out and people resonate with it because people are looking for that light energy. That's what we want. That's what we crave for. We want to connect with that because that's our true essence. Mm, exactly. Yes. So for our audience, could you, um, I, and I don't know if you do this, and if you don't do this, we will just cut it out, cut this out. But do you also do energetical transmissions? 
I mean, I don't know what you call it, or I, I just try to communicate, you know, and commune. Yes. Um, so I don't know what that is, you know, if yes. what you call. I, I mean, I commune to communicate to. I try to stay in the heart, and be genuinely what I come came here to do, you know, and yes. stick to that, you know. Yes. Um, but like, um, I also like like to dance, you know. I also like to have fun and and do uh, jokes and crazy things, you know. And in, in that way, celebrate life also uh, in a in a human human way, you know, to be to be grounded and be who I am, you know. I I know exactly all my limits, limitations, and all my, you know, shortcomings. But I also know now why, why I am here, you know, and uh, being 70 years old, you know, I have experienced something now. And I I feel it's my duty to, to share what I have experienced. And somebody can pick up whatever they can use. And I know that that will be carried on into long after I'm not here and it will, will become something else. But I just hope it will become something more advanced than I was able to do or see, like where I picked it up from. Those who, who, who gave me the gift, they also wanted to, 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 to give it to somebody who could carry that on. So there's a lot of people now in the so-called spiritual realm uh, living on earth today that are trying to do exactly that, to, to want to share from their heart whatever they have experienced. And there's so many now that uh, I think there's a really hope for the future also, for humankind. Yes. You, you think there's hope? You, you're still optimistic? Always. I think that light will always endure and that light being consciousness, you know, to me, God is consciousness, you know. Yes. So how can that ever be? I mean, we are just in the middle of a sandbox playing, I don't know, you know, but it's so sure, sure real in, in comparison to the real reality. And um, yeah, so we just happen to be here <laughs> to, to um, yeah, to witness all this and to try and uh, inspire people to see there's also other uh, possibilities, you know. And other higher realities in a way. Because exactly. I, I, I think the reality that we see in the media right now, the, re the reality that is being played out in front of our eyes is, mm. we could say, a lower reality. It's not our true essence. And, you know, we can elevate everything by choosing to not focus our attention there and mm. to create another higher reality that is connected exactly. with the light. Exactly. That's what, what we must do, I feel. We really must, uh, that is our only concern, is to, to uh, really try to keep our balance in all this and not try not to, sometimes we fall maybe, and that's only natural, but we yes. must get back up on the horse and yeah, have our goal there and see, mm, yes. yeah. So, so Lars, you um, you will be in Amsterdam very soon, I think. Um, mm -hmm. On the twenty first, I think. Yes. I'll be there. Yeah, the twenty. No, the twenty second. I will be in Amsterdam doing a talk, and then the following week on the twenty third, the twenty third and fourth, I'll do a workshop there in Amsterdam. Yes, and uh, I heard there are still uh, some sp spots open for um, your yeah, talk and workshop. Uh, yeah, because um, there was restriction because of the corona when we started this, when we op now it's opened up. So now there's more tickets for sale. So yeah. if you're interested, you, you're always welcome to come. Yeah, so a lot of people in the audience are in, in, in the Netherlands and in Belgium, very close to Amsterdam, of course. So, so mm -hmm. the people who are watching right now and they're saying, mm, you know, I'm, I feel that I maybe want to go to see, see Lars. Um, mm -hmm. Can you share a little bit um, on, on what they can expect? Yes, we will do a lot of um, healing work. We will do a lot of um, energy work and we will um, 
true song and true sound. We will also try to reach the inner realm of the heart. And then I will go into uh, things about, you know, a few concepts in the Aramaic language that people can use. It's really important for me that when people leave the workshops of mine, that they can take something with them and use it in their own work, you know. Yes. So that's very much my yeah, so My that goal. they can integrate it in their lives. Exactly. And also, yeah. to if somebody has an issue or something that needs healing, we will absolutely work with that and try to get that uh, balanced again, whatever people are suffering from. Yeah. Yes. So so if, if people need healing, they can address it in, in, the, in the workshop with you? Of course. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, yeah, that's and, really uh, good. Yeah. And, and also get some... Uh, some tools to to keep working you know with certain yes. issues you know? yes but many times the things are shifting immediately while we are there you yes. Know, so. yes i saw in a lot of um, interviews that you did that you like to wear um, white clothing um is um um, you know, is it easier to do your healing work when you're wearing white clothing? Uh, is there a reason why you like to wear white clothing? It's my my uh, my past as an EC, yes. where we always uh, were wore uh, white. That was what you call the uniform. But uh, no, I also I'm also a blue man <laughs> and a white man yes. and whatever you know. But mostly I'm blue or white. Yes. Yes. So I would like everyone watching right now, you know, um, you have seen our conversation with Lars. <clears throat> if you feel a connection, if you feel the resonance, please join Lars in Amsterdam. You will see uh, how to purchase tickets here under the video below. I will post all the links. Lars, it was such an honor and a privilege to talk with you. You but just um, yeah. I, 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 I've, I really enjoyed it and um, mm -hmm. I really like the energy and I like I really like the the exchange that we had and yeah. um i hope to see you when you're in amsterdam yeah that could and, be great uh, i hope it will be a great time for you and i also hope that everyone uh, that will come or uh, is, is 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 not sure yet of the, if um if they want to come that they are now you know convinced because of the video um and that they really feel the call to to come and see you in person thank you so much thank you very much Baptiste. thank you take care now